conversation now is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, who's hanging out in the Cougar Council Room. Greg, welcome Hello, to BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> Good to see you again, guys. All right. Uh, like I mentioned, expansion is back on the mind. Uh, the idea that the Magnificent Seven from the ACC uh, may be looking to change TV contracts or move conferences. Of course, the Pac-12 has been involved here. How aggressive, if you were in charge in any capacity in the Big 12, would you be in pursuing other entities, whether it's the ACC or the Pac-12? Well, we already know the, that, that Brett Yormark has an aggressive mindset. Yes. And you know that he has many irons and multiple fires at this point. On both coasts, I think it's fair to say. Uh, and and uh, if, if somebody's going to shift and somebody's going to move, I don't see how Brett Yormark's not going to be involved one way or the other in, in uh, adding to his conference's stature and prominence. Now, the, the question becomes how big and how big is too big and, and what size is safe. Um, 12 feels like a good number, obviously, for a lot of good reasons, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if 14 or 16 ends up being the final number if they're the right two or four teams uh, to be additive. And that's the biggest thing for about your mark has been we can't be diluted, we have to be additive. And what really adds cachet and value and eyeballs to your league becomes the question here. Mm. And it's interesting because the grant of rights in the ACC was a 20-year deal through 2036. It feels like they're just stuck. So, yes, the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> NC State's in the Mag Seven. What? is super interesting, but there are a few sort of free agents-ish out there, like UConn's interesting in basketball, Gonzaga obviously in basketball. How basketball-y does the Big 12 want to be? They're yeah. already good enough. And then, of course, uh, Pac-12 poaching at some point is an option. So we'll see what happens here, but what is too big? Because we saw the old whack with BYU in it, and obviously that wasn't those weren't Power 5 schools. But that was too much. That was too much. Um, what, what is too much at some point? Like, do you think we'll see a 20-team league at some point? Yeah, I mean, I, there's been talk of the 20-team super conference, and, and I, I don't know. I, I think once you get to that, you, you take almost all of what makes college sports special. Um, I'm kind of a romantic when it comes to college sports, and the things that make, some of the things that make college sports special are geography, rivalry, and history. You want to have those elements in, in your group. And I realize that, that in the Big 12, BYU right now is a geographical outlier. And, and rivalries will emerge. But there is some history, and it doesn't feel like BYU is a misfit in the Big 12 at all. In fact, it feels like a great fit and the best fit that BYU could have right now. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the larger you get, the more you take away from what makes college sports really special. And I hope that can be retained with whatever the Big 12 chooses to do. I do think that, that um, bringing in another Western team or two would, yeah. would actually help BYU. It makes yes. BYU less of an outlier that way. So I, I've actually been a fan of that being a part of the strategy. Uh, if they choose to go far, farther up the East Coast or into the Southeast, so be it. it, it uh, ultimately, Brett Yormark's vision is a coast-to-coast -coast conference. Be in all four time zones, have windows from morning till night, and have your product viable. And I can see that happening. Uh, but I, there is a point where I think you know, there is a too big component in this, and I want to retain as many of those what I think are special collegiate sports elements as possible. Greg Rubel is with us on BYU Sports Nation. As it stands, 14 teams in the Big 12 for at least one more year. Texas and Oklahoma take off at the SEC on July 1st of 2024. Then it's down to 12, maybe, we think, for a year, <laughs> unless something crazy happens. But... As if, if you look at BYU and the 14 teams involved now, including the Cougars for this first year of college football, expectations is always a heavy and fun topic. And right now we're seeing the Vegas Lions, who their job is to make money, Greg. It's just to, to make money. And Entice. Exactly. Yes. They set the line, depending on which book you look, look at, at four and a half, five or five and a half. So how do you take that type of information and manage your own expectations when we all want BYU to win every game? Well, and, and over season – could be six, right? And six to me is a really fine starting, sp uh, starting spot in the sure. Big 12. If you're bowl eligible in year one of Big 12 membership, I think it's a win. And so let's go with, uh, let, let's set it at six, say. Um, uh, not to take things to, for granted, but uh, your first two games are against uh, a, a first year F FBS and an FCS. And that, again, Sam Houston just coming out of FCS. So let's say you can, you can get to two and zero to start your year. Well, now you're trying to find four P5 wins in 10 games. You can do it. Is that doable? Yeah. 
I, I think we'd all agree that it is. That's a historical number that BYU wins. BYU wins 40%. Right. Yeah. And this team, we've been talking about it, is more prepared for this moment than any other BYU oh, team they're, in they're, history. They're, the cupboard is by no means bare right? for BYU going in. They lost draft picks, but they're, a, I, think, a, I think, a pretty good spot going into the Big 12. And, and, and I think the underdog mentality, the chip-on-the-shoulder mentality, the first-year uh, phenom, and all these things might come into play and really have us in a few months going, wow, that was even better than we thought it could go. But that said... If you can find four wins out of those 10 P5 games, which is doable, uh, you find yourself at a six-win season, you find yourself playing in the postseason in your first year in the Big 12, and I think that would be, uh, that would be fantastic. And I think when you're breaking down sort of first half, second half of uh, the season, I think BYU's got to go out and get four wins in the first six because that back six feels tough. Um, and who knows what injuries and up to and for both happens. teams, for both sides too. You don't know what, what the other team will look like sure. on the back half of the season too. Yes, and and getting you know at Kansas, upstart team from last year, really good quarterback Jalen Daniels, Cincinnati at home on a Friday night, which is going to be absolutely juiced. Mm -hmm. Like that, that night is going to feel like Utah 2021, Baylor 22. I, I think that's going to be a special Arizona night, State similar vibe. Yes, uh, yeah, it's like yeah. yeah. Lavelle Edwards Stadium is packed, night game. BYU is tough to beat it uh, there. Okay, let's talk uh, soccer. Before uh, we get to real quick, uh, two components that I think will play into all of this that you have to have health and depth. Yes. And, and just uh, yeah. I, I think the more you go along, just keep those two words in mind. Do they have the health? Do they have the depth? And I think they've, making step, they've taken steps certainly toward the depth part of it mm -hmm. by the guys they're bringing in. It just increases the strength of each position group right now. And they're not done, which is great. Right. They're still going, right. which is awesome. Okay, soccer. Uh, you went with the women's soccer team to Europe. Um, I first want to uh, have you show some of your favorite photos <laughs> from this um, and tell us what it is we're looking at because you guys went on this incredible journey. Well, first of all, how grateful am I for the invitation uh, that Jen Rockwood uh, issued to, to join the team? And she did the same thing in 2016 with the Italy trip. So I've been on two foreign tours with uh, women's soccer, and they've both been unbelievably horizon expanding experiences. Just unbelievable. So, first of all, gratitude to Jen and her staff for involving the radio guy uh, and taking him on the trip. Um, but yeah, this trip was, and now keep in mind, I'm going to show, I think, six pics. I took hundreds of photos. Okay, I took <laughs> hundreds of photos. Yes. Okay, a lot of them showed up on my social media, yep. Twitter, Instagram, but a lot did not. I've got a lot in the phone. So I just, and it's hard to pick you five or six. You packed a lot of film. <laughs> I did. I was developing film like you would so not much believe. Development. Uh, but so these are just a handful. So we're going to start with Vienna. Now, I'm skipping the palaces. We visited two palaces in Vienna, mm. but St. Stephen's Cathedral mm. in Vienna, uh, I think, was the first. Yeah, here we go. Oh, uh, this, is, this is St. Stephen's Cathedral. I, I, and the ornateness and the mm. size of this thing, and it's not that old. It's only 500 years old. Only. Um, <laughs> only. Oh, but, it's a newer yeah, one. Right. Uh, but I, I was just, I, I just walked around, and, and again, you can see a little of the detail there, but the amount of detail in this building was just, uh, just staggering. So this is St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna, and there was a lot to see in Vienna. Uh, we, two palaces we're not going to see, but that was Vienna. If you look close, you can th see the hunchback of Notre Dame. Right <laughs> we went from Vienna to Salzburg, and Salzburg blew me away. Salzburg included a trip out to the Lakes District, and this is a fix. I think you've actually had this pick on your show. This is a pick we took of the girls at the Lakes District, which is just outside of Salzburg, wow. and it's a series of lakes all surrounded by mountains. This in is pretty mountain. representative of what you're looking at and it was we went from lake to lake and town to town and there were so many charming pics that I didn't include here of these little villages on the lakeside so the lakes district was unbelievable and that was outside of Salzburg back in Salzburg there is a castle a fortress called the Hohen Salzburg Fortress. This is the view you get from the top of the fortress. Wow. Mm. That's Salzburg from the top of the fortress. And, and that's just one of the many views I had from the top of the fortress. Salzburg blew me away. Uh, birthplace of Mozart. And you can Woo. see that uh, in, in, in the center part of Salzburg. And that was just one of the beautiful views you get from the fortress. Unbelievable. Um, from, uh, from Austria, we then headed down to Croatia, but we stopped at the ice caves, Ice Wiesenwelt. And this is a picture <laughs> on the way to the ice caves, but you can yeah. see the Austrian Alps in the background. And this is a stop on the way. It's a hike, it's a gondola, it's a hike, and then you're in the ice caves for an hour. And the ice caves themselves are fantastic. I have some social media pics of those. We won't see them here. But this was on the way to the ice caves in the Austrian Alps, and the girls were having a blast. And I just love that shot. It kind of shows everything that Austria is. Then you're down to Croatia. And Croatia, 
um, just blew my mind. And, and we were down in Split, and we were in Zadar. We don't have pictures of that, but we have pictures here of Plitvici Lakes National Park in Croatia. Mm. And this is one of the countless waterfalls that, that exist in this. There are 16 lakes and so many waterfalls you cannot count. And this is a great pick of the team in front of what they call the big waterfall. Incredible. It's called the big waterfall. So there you go. <laughs> Appropriately. <laughs> yeah. And so up to northern Croatia uh, on the way out. Well, by the way, we skipped totally Slovenia. We were in Ljubljana, Slovenia, which is f fantastic. On the way back out, this is Pula, Croatia. This is the arena or the Colosseum in Pula. Awesome. This was, the construction of this began in like 42 B.C., and ended in the first century A.D. Wow. And this is one of one of six surviving Roman Colosseums, because what you don't get or what I didn't get before was that what you see in Croatia is a lot of what you're going to see in Italy. It's right across the Adriatic. Adriatic. And so, so yeah. much of what was happening in Italy was happening, happening in Croatia. So this Colosseum, the arena in Pula, Croatia, is reminiscent of the Colosseum in Rome, which I've also seen, and it blew me away as well. Was it, is it, this a WCC or Big 12-sized Colosseum? Uh, I, 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 I think probably Colosseum in Rome is, is, is Big 12. For sure. This may be more... It's power 5. But this is like, it, it's, 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 it's the kennel. It was it's the, the kennel. kennel like Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty big time. Size. Pretty big time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, and again, we skipped a lot, but that's just a few of what we <laughs> so uh, had going on. And then we ended up in Italy and flew out of Venice and, uh, yeah, wait another four years and see if another what invite what comes. Trip, yeah. It's a Greg Rebell <laughs> photo journal on BYU Sports that's Station. Awesome, How's real estate down by the fjord, Greg? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look into that for me. Rick Stevens, a.k.a. Greg Rebell here. <laughs> All right, we do need to talk about the soccer schedule, and it's going to make your life very busy combined with football with yeah. the Thursday-Monday set up for BYU women's soccer around Saturday for college football. So what do you think of the women's soccer schedule overall in the Big 12? Well, the first thing you do know is that the Big 12 stays away from football Saturdays. They let football own the Saturday. I love that, actually. Yeah. Because then yeah. everyone gets their due. Right. And, a good, and from, from an on-campus standpoint and facilities, it just makes it easier yeah. to have football have its own day. And so the rest of the league will be on Sundays, of course, but BYU bounces to Monday for obvious reasons. That's one big change. Um, and then, of course, it's a, chance, it's a challenge. And Jen was on your show yesterday talking about that challenge of not having a Sunday available. How do you work around it? It'll get worked around they'll find a way there's no doubt about that and it could be that they make some alterations in their travel plans to give them as many days home as possible or days recovering as possible um, it's a challenge and it's a challenge no one else will have in the league except for the teams that play BYU on those Mondays but I'm fully confident Jen can find a way to get this done there are only two back-to-back -back road weekends Thursday Monday BYU have one back-to-back -back home weekend Thursday Monday so we'll see if that evens out over time as well um, and most teams BYU's played or a lot of the teams BYU's played before and I think the big 12, top of the Big 12 and top of the WWCC, pretty comparable. You might find a little more strength the deeper you go down in the Big 12 than you did in the WCC. But I think at the very top, the two leagues are pretty representative uh, of, of high caliber competition. So BYU's had a great on-ramp. I think the on-ramp for football was perfect with independence, playing P5s more and more every year. And the on-ramp for soccer in the Big 12 was good because the WCC was so good at the top of the league. Awesome stuff. Greg, thanks for uh, the tour of Europe. And, uh, of course, the discussion on expectations for football and soccer. And shout out to baseball. Let's cross fingers. Come on. It's got to be a Come lot on. has to happen. You got to win three against Pepperdine and Gonzaga's got to win three somehow at Santa Clara. That gets to BYU. That gets BYU to Las Vegas. That's the only formula right now to get BYU to the WCC tournament. So in a year where BYU has beaten every team in the league at least one time, um, you know, series were kind of elusive. Series wins were kind of elusive. Yeah. But a series sweep is now needed here against Pepperdine Let's and go. cross fingers and hope for get some it help. Done. All yeah. right. Get it done. Good luck to the back, Cass. All right. Greg. You bet. Okay, if you